Good morning, good morning, YouTube, or good afternoon, or whenever you're watching this. This is Dave Croft. Welcome to my week six recap of my 52 Qs vlog, where every week I uh, come on YouTube and I talk about a Q that I, I produced, wrote the week before, and talk about kind of whatever is going on either in the industry or maybe some industry insights or talking about the process and, and all of that. Uh, I want to thank all of you guys for the positive feedback I got from last week's video. We will have a link to this at the end of this episode, the uh, the five ways to be like Bob Ross. And, and I'm, I'm here to report that Funko Bob Ross is with me and uh, he, uh, he, he is here on my on my desk encouraging me to be more like him in every single way so i appreciate all of the feedback uh, and, and if you have any comments questions or whatever please i, I make every effort to to respond and re i absolutely read all of those if you have questions comments feedback whatever you can leave those in the comments below but i hope that you had a good week six i hope you had you had a productive week six if you didn't write that's okay that's all right sometimes man sometimes you just kind of need a break but you know whatever this this new normal is for you i hope that i uh, hope that you're doing well and uh and taking care of yourself and all of that and and this morning I was going to uh, I was going to talk about coloring and how you organize your cues and, and your stems and I think I'm going to push that back to next week because as I was getting dressed this morning I put on this t-shirt and this t-shirt is from my my barber atomic barber company uh, in Orlando it's actually in Winter Park and uh, it really got me thinking and first of all yes I, I do have a barber I do my head myself but uh, I have I have a beard guy and uh, it took me a, a really long time to kind of get on board with having a beard guy because I just did it myself with like some cheap conair tweez uh, not tweezers but some uh, some some cheap trimmers or whatever but um, but it took me way too long to get a beard guy and Jordan is my beard guy at atomic barber company and uh, he does a fantastic job with my beard or at least he did because I haven't seen him in a year it was almost uh, exactly exactly one year ago to the week that I canceled my last appointment because one year ago is when all the lockdowns started happening when the pandemic really started kicking into full gear and uh, it's been a year now, I have tried to trim it up myself. I, I do as uh, as good of a job as I can, and I can't wait to uh, to go back and see Jordan and have him really do me upright. But uh, this has been my new normal. This has been all of our new normals, masks and, and curbside delivery and and uh, instant delivery groceries. Uh, actually, I've during the pandemic, I've started going to the grocery store myself. I go every Tuesday morning. I spend an hour, go to the grocery store. Nobody's in public. So I'm by myself. There's like one or two other people. I put on my headphones, listen to podcasts, and, and do the family shopping for the whole week. But that's become the new normal. And there are so many things in our lives that have become new normals that we've had to adjust to whether it's watching your favorite late night show and there's like no audience that's normal i, I remember when it first when it first happened like i, I like uh, john oliver and, and colbert and all of that and, and there was no audience and it was weird sounding but now it, it's, it's kind of starting to sound normal isn't it seeing masks everywhere and social distancing that's that's normal i uh, a year ago, the, the term social distancing sounded new. And, and, and we went through this period at the beginning of the pandemic where it, it was new and it was kind of exciting and, you know, Netflix and chill and all of that start, right? But then we kind of pushed through it. We tried to figure out how can we have some semblance of normalcy and yet still take care of ourselves and take care of each other and take care of our loved ones, making sure that everybody is safe. But even, even this past week, one of my wife's aunts contracted COVID. A year later, a year after, after all, of, all of the hard work, all of the distancing, all of the, the curbside meal pickup and cooking from home and, and, and all of that. And it just gets, 
kind of gets old. It gets really, really old and really tiring. And, and so as I was putting on my shirt this morning, kind of in honor of, of the, the, the year ago that I, that I last had a beard trim, or actually it's been longer since I've had a beard trim, it's, since I've gone in, it's a year ago that I canceled the appointment. And so what, what does it have to do with production music? Well, it got me thinking how all of the time, in production music especially, we have to adjust to constant new normals. New normals in technology. New sample libraries come out, and they're increasingly better and increasingly more amazing, and there are always new toys and new tools to play with, but it's always changing, new updates. Your favorite DAW gets updated, and then now there's a new feature. For me, uh, Logic 10, I think 10.5 introduced the, uh, what is it called? See, I don't even use it, uh, the uh, loops grid. I, I haven't even haven't even messed with that. That's a whole other side of, of that, the DAW that, that I haven't even messed with. But the students I'm teaching at Full Sail, they're into it. So I, I need to adjust to that new normal. Things like trends changing. As production music composers, yes, some, some things are evergreen, like dramedy cues and, and, and tension cues and those kind of things. But but trends change. If you're a trailer music composer, you absolutely know this. The trend, you've got to kind of follow the trends. And whatever's popular, whatever gets air, you gotta you gotta go there if you're looking to to build your library and increase your placements. Because you can't just keep doing the thing that worked last season or the season before. And uh, that's a lesson that doing a, a lot of sports broadcasting. Or, or music for sports broadcasting, I am always chasing that, always chasing the trends, and always hearing something live on the air that you never in a million years thought would get play, and there it is, behind Jim Nance's voice. And so that becomes a new normal. And so you chase it, and you, and you, you, you produce it, and then suddenly it changes. And so this idea of, of constantly changing, constantly shifting, shifting ground underneath us is baked into our careers as production music composers and, and, and really media composers. If you're a game composer or a film composer, the idea is you're not sitting around just making music for yourself. You're not making just art for yourself. You're making music that serves often another purpose. It's serving another medium. It's helping to tell usually somebody else's story. Unless of course you're your own director or whatever, but I'm not. And I have no I have no no uh no dreams of that kind of thing. I don't necessarily want to be an artist. I don't want to put out my own music to make any kind of statement. My, I'm a media composer. So my music is always supporting somebody else's vision, and that vision is often shifting underneath us. And so the idea of adjusting to the new normal is very common. And if that feels uncomfortable for you, then you might have some, some tough sledding ahead of you because it's, it's the one constant in the industry is that things are always changing. And that sounds cliche and, you know, the bumper sticker, but it, it's absolutely true. And this year has been no exception in our society, nor in our industry. And so I'm here just to kind of encourage you, and this is kind of a, a self-reflective uh, type of a vlog today. But as I was putting on my shirt, I was like, man, I, I really, I, I, miss, I miss being able to, to go sit in a barber chair and sit back and have him work on my beard. And they do the whole thing, like the straight razor, and they do the like three hot towels and the massage, like they do it all. And then I miss that. Yes, they're open, like Atomic Barber is open right now, but but it's it's not worth the risk to me, my family. Exposure to COVID, no, there's strains and variants and everything coming. It's just not worth it. So, 
those are my thoughts on on the new normal and adjusting to the new normal. It's kind of rambly today, but that's kind of the headspace I'm in. But in the meantime, we can talk about the cue that I uh, wrapped up last week. This cue is called Brood Beneath the Surface, and uh, it is another Americana tension cue. This is a, an album I am working on for a publisher. Tension cues that have an, an infusion of Americana instruments. Now, one thing that's interesting about this cue is aside from the guitar and the drum effects and cymbal effects, uh, this is all stock logic, stock logic sounds. Uh, this is a guitar and it's uh, actually uh, that, that guitar there, there it is. <laughs> That is a, a Taylor Big Baby. It's not a super fancy guitar, uh, but uh, it works. It works really well for me. And I also uh, recorded it. Uh, I, I double tracked it, so I recorded one side and then I recorded the other side. It gives me a nice, nice wide, wide sound. All right, so so typical tension cue, light tension cue, very slow moving harmony, where it's just cooking on one chord for quite a long time here. And then we go into our breakdown section. So we have our A section and then our B section. And the B section uh, is, is, is usually with my cues, I try to infuse some sort of uh, melodic fragment. And so I have my main melody. Boom, ba, boom, ba. And so then I have a halftime version of that. And then let it breathe, bring in this hong, which Logic has a stellar hong, or I think they call it metal pan or metal drum. Now, I did get some feedback from the publisher. Uh, he did accept it, but uh, Though as I'm moving forward through this album, I need to be a little bit more overt with my Americana sounds because truth is you pull this guitar off of the track and, you, and you're left with a pretty standard boilerplate type of a, of a tension cue, which works great for, for mystery shows, investigation shows, you know, crime shows, that kind of thing. But, um, but as I'm moving forward, I need to I need to be a little bit more overt with this, and and what what I did is when I mixed this and submitted the final stems, is I really boosted the guitar in the mix to make it a little bit more. All right, and that is a that is a guitar bend where you take the guitar and you strum it and you push the headstock just a little bit. Don't overdo it. You don't want to damage your guitar. But uh, you, you strum and you push the headstock and you get that it's a, it's a way to get a, a whammy bar type of an effect in uh, with it like an acoustic guitar. So, so that's, that's what's going on there. But use sparingly. You definitely don't want to damage your guitar. And, and I hold no responsibility if you do that and you break the headstock off. All right, so just a brief overview of the sounds. These are uh, some alchemy sounds. Uh, this wood synth layered with Logic's really good marimba. And then with their kalimba, which Logic has a really uh, decent kalimba as well, into some piano. This is a Steinway Grand, a patch called uh, uh, Magic Lantern. All right, just kind of ethereal, and we already talked about the hong and the guitar. Uh, this is a pad called uh, Ice Pad. Just really atmospheric things. This is the Inkling Pad. And the Vector Pad. Just these low pad sounds here. I forget what this patch is called. Hammered Wood. Uh, it almost sounds like a PVC pipe, and that's kind of the, the vibe I was going for. And I have an electric piano pulse going on here that I plugged in an ARP. And, I, and I've talked about this before. Anytime I, I bring in pulses, I like to use uh, non-symmetrical 
uh, 16th note uh, patterns. So instead of this being like a 16th note pattern like this, if I make it a 13 note pattern, and because the electric piano responds to velocity, meaning the harder you hit it, then the more it kind of opens up, the, the, the cutoff kind of opens up, it barks a little bit more. And then the length, make that a 13 note pattern. One, two, three, four, one. And, and that, that accent pattern doesn't line up exactly with the beat. And you get this kind of random vibe without, with, with very little effort, with very little effort. Uh, there's also another bass pulse here, which is using the same type of a pattern. And an orchestral sub, which is just a sampler instrument with nothing loaded, and you get a sine wave, and it's just a big, fat, subby, subby sound. Minimalist kit, stock logic, then reverse piano here. And then a reverse Vox sound, which is a stock uh, logic one shot, reverse cymbal, stock logic one shot. shot. And then some, uh, some drum effects uh, that I recorded on uh, using the rubber ball mallet works really well and then some bowed simple things happening here all right so we're into our into our b section double up the melody or the this uh, second part on this hong And then a little three, four bar break. This is really good in your arrangement to give your editors an edit point. Bring back the melody. So we basically have A and then a B section and then an A plus B. That's kind of the, my standard form because there's the, the B melody. Bring it home, ending with a button here on bar 39. All right, so that is brewed beneath my uh, brewed beneath the surface. My cue for week six, uh, one of uh, one of a few cues that I worked on last week. Um, and, and yeah, so I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, one of the things I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start live streaming my, uh, some of my, my writing, my writing sessions, uh, writing a cue, and I'm going to make that for my Patreon subscribers. If that's something that you're interested in, you can check out the Patreon link below. I, 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 depending on how, you know, how interested people are in it, I'm, I'm definitely willing to make that a, a weekly thing, but it's going to be a, uh, a for the Patreon subscribers and Patreon, those, those it's just like a, it's a dollar. It's really just a, a way to help kind of pay for some web hosting and that kind of stuff. I'm not looking to make, make it rich or anything and I'm not gonna pimp my Patreon a ton on this channel or whatever. It's not what this is about. But um, if there's interest, think about live streaming that, uh, not like on Twitch, but uh, you'll, you'll be able to uh, access the, uh, the, the, the live stream there. So all that link is in the doobly-doo below. But I, I, thanks for listening and thanks for hanging out with me this, this Monday morning. And it was kind of rambly and, and all kind of in my head. And, uh, and yeah, this week coming up, uh, I'm going to probably have to, I need to finish off more American attention stems and get those, get those done. Also have uh, put a, did a few other hip hop cues that are coming up because the NCAA tournament is coming up and I will be writing some hip hop for that and transitioning into uplifting power ballad rock cues for golf. So that's gonna do it for me today. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Until next time, peace.